right. We're going to go ahead and begin a little bit differently than we normally do on our Wednesday morning uh, gentle class. We're going to actually start in Shavasana. We're going to lay down on our mat. And if you do have a strap or you do have a dish towel or a hand towel, keep that handy. Just maybe have it up by your side. And then we're just going to very gently make our way down to the mat very gracefully. Uh, the way I like to do it is I like to just kind of sit back, place my hands behind me, rotate my feet to the side. And since we're not warmed up, take it very easily coming down. Maybe come down on the right elbow and then come down on the left elbow and slowly remove your elbows and work your way down to a flat Shavasana-like position. And you can spread your feet just um, wide enough that your feet are still on your mat. And just relax your head and relax your shoulders, relax your hips. We're going to stay right here in center before we do anything else. So we're just gonna begin to connect our breath. So just begin to relax. Allow your body just to melt right into the mat. You can have your eyes closed if you like. We're going to focus on our breath. Breathing in from the belly. Up through the chest and collarbone. In through the back of your throat. And then exhale through your nose or pursed lips. Nice. And then we're going to turn this into a yogi, ujjayi breath, where we're going to try our very best to breathe in through our nose and out through our nose. And I'm going to guide you through this. So let's take our first breath. We're going to count it out for four, breathing in from the belly. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. I always make to like I always like to make the um, exhale a little bit longer. I think it really helps with relaxation. Now, if you're not hearing your breath in the back of your throat, I mentioned this last week. I just want to remind you of a little trick. When you breathe in, when you inhale, breathe in as though you're surprised to see somebody. Just <gasps> inhale. And then when you exhale, Breathe out through your nose as though you're fogging up a mirror. And you will start to hear that in the back of your throat. It sounds a little bit like the ocean. Let's try this. So breathing in surprised. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Through your nose, fogging up a mirror. One more time, just like that. Surprised, breathing in. One, two, three, four, fogging up a mirror. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Are you starting to hear that beautiful Ujjayi breath? Hold on to that and listen to it in the back of your throat. And as you're enjoying that relaxing Ujjayi breath, hopefully your body has just started to melt right into your mat. Hopefully you're not flexing your feet or any part of your body and you're just relaxing. And as you're doing this, let's set an intention for today's practice. It can be one simple word, an affirmation, a prayer, a goal, lots of things. I like to do just one simple word. And then if I ever find myself resisting or wanting to come out of the pose, I'll go to my little word and it will just help me to stay. So my intention for today's practice is just the word patience. Being patient with myself to remain in a pose or be patient with myself if I need to come out of it because of a little pain or discomfort. That's okay too. So let's go ahead and take another breath in. Breathing in through our nose, one, two, three, four. Exhale, fogging up that mirror, one, two, three, four, five. Nice work, my friends. All right, we're going to go ahead and begin our gentle practice. We're just going to place our right foot on the mat and draw that foot up, feeling the mat underneath that foot on the right side. And then we're going to grab 
our strap or our dish towel, or if you don't have that, you can just uh, use your hands. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna use a strap just to demo, but we're just gonna take our foot and place it in the strap. We're not gonna make any little uh, loop for the strap. And if you don't have a strap, you can just maybe use your hands. Or, and if you use your hands, place your hands maybe on your calf muscle or um, right around the bottom of your knee. You don't wanna cause any strain. So using that strap, we're just gonna straighten our right leg up, pulling the strap out. You can relax your head. I like to grab hold of the strap with my right hand and just take your left hand and just let it rest. If you're using your hands, your hand would be right around the bottom of your uh, knee or that calf muscle, just holding on with your right hand. And on your next breath, you're just gonna draw that right leg out to the side. It may, your foot may touch the floor. It may not touch the floor. We don't wanna strain any part of the hips. We just wanna open and breathe, hearing your breath in the back of your throat. And then slowly on your next breath, bring that leg right back up to the center. And I know a lot of times you hear me say, flex your toes towards your forehead. We're really not warmed up to do that. So we're just gonna keep our toes relaxed. If you have your strap, you're gonna just switch hands to the left hand, or if you don't have a strap or a dish towel, use your left hand and grab hold of that same area, your calf muscle or the back of your knee, and just relax that right arm. And we're just gonna draw that right leg to the other side, which is the left side, making any kind of a stop if you feel any strain or pain. Holding that, holding that, hearing your breath in the back of your throat. And then inhale that leg right back up towards the top. We're gonna to do that one more time. The purpose of this is our low back. We're really taking care of it and stretching it out. So on your next breath, switch hands, either on your calf muscle or on your strap, right hand grabs hold, left hand comes down, exhale, bring that right leg out to the outside edge of the right part of your mat. Your head can just stay stable looking at the ceiling. And then inhale that leg right back up. Let's switch our hands. The left hand goes to your strap or to your calf. The right hand comes down and just draw that right leg down towards the left side. Holding it. And then inhale, bringing it right back up. Let's go ahead and release the strap. You can bend that right leg and then just slide it right back down to where you started into Shavasana. We're going to do the other side. So bending that left knee, just scooching that foot, feeling the mat underneath your foot, feeling those sensations of the bottom of the foot touching the mat as we begin our practice taking that strap, dish towel, or your hand, you're just gonna do the same thing on the left side. Just find a little way to loop um, the strap underneath that foot, making sure it's stable or grabbing your calf muscle. And this time we're gonna just place the right arm down and hold the strap with our left arm and we're gonna go the opposite direction. So we're going to, on our next breath, let that left leg fall towards the left side of our mat, keeping your head stable. And my foot is touching the wall just because of where my mat is. If your foot is doing that too, no worries. That's perfectly fine. And then inhale, bring that foot back up and switch sides. Take the right hand, hold your device, whether it's a towel or a strap or your calf muscle. And on your next breath, bring your left leg across your body over to the right side. Trying to keep the hips on the mat, but they're probably gonna come off the mat a little bit and that's okay. And then inhale, the leg goes back up, switch hands, left hand, right hand goes down, exhale, leg comes down to the left side. We're gonna do it one more time. Inhale, leg comes up, switch hands, right hand 
grabs the reins, left hand comes down, exhale, leg comes to the right side, and then inhale, left leg comes back up. Go ahead and remove that strap, dish towel, or your hand. Bend the knee and let that foot just touch the mat and draw, this time, draw the right foot up towards your body. So your legs, both legs are going to be bent. And you can bring your arms out into a T, press the soles of your feet into the mat, make sure that your uh, dish towel or your strap is out of the way because we're gonna take some little windshield white movements. We're gonna just swish our legs, letting the knees fall to the right, taking a deep breath in, one, two, three, four. And then exhale those knees up for one, two, three, four, five. Breathing through the nose. And then inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, let those knees fall to the left. One, two, three, four, five. And then inhale, knees come up. One, two, three, four. Exhale. Knees come to the right, one, two, three, four, five. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. Think about where your hands are. They're in a T, your arms are in a T. You're just gonna swing that left arm over to the right. Maybe your hands even touch. And then you're gonna draw your uh, hands just right underneath your head, bending the elbows almost like a little pillow. Does this sound familiar? This is how we usually end our practice. And we're going to eventually make our way back up to our mat. So we're, we're starting out like we normally do. But let's stay here for a few breaths. We're on our right side. Let's take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and just melt into your mat. Take another breath. One, two, three, four, fog up that mirror. One, two, three, four, five. Great work, great breath work. And then on your next breath, go ahead and release your hands and very slowly, very gently, press yourself back up onto your mat. And this is the way we normally start. And come to a comfortable seated position. You might even want to have your, um, your dish towel or your strap nearby. If you don't have uh, this equipment, don't worry. It's okay because there are always ways to use our body. And we're gonna sit up tall. So you have a choice. You can use your block if you wish and just place that underneath you. I like to sit on a block because it does allow for a little bit of height. It allows the knees to drop down, takes a little bit of stress and um, pressure off of them. And uh, it's just a nice way to begin a practice. So if, if you wanna sit on a block, that's fine. If you have a cushion nearby, you could sit on that as well, or you could just sit flat on your mat. No worries, nothing wrong with that. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall, creating that length, imagining that there's that little string holding us up from the ceiling or head up from the ceiling. And let's go ahead and reach our shoulders up towards our ears. You can close your eyes if you like and roll them back. And let's do that again. Reach the shoulders up towards the ears, roll them back, squeezing the shoulder blades together when you do that. Should feel really nice. And then just continuing our lengthening here. This is where you might want to use your strap again. We're just going to sit up tall. And you can take your strap or your dishcloth and just let it hang. And you're just going to hold it. Maybe there's like about, oh, I don't know, an inch or two hanging down. And you're just raising that right hand. And then just take that strap and put it back behind you if it's hanging over your shoulder. And you can always um, feed it down to give yourself a little more length. You're gonna take the left hand, reach it back behind you, find that strap, find the edge of it, and you may have to let it go a little more. And once you find it, then you're just gonna bend the arms and 
try to walk your fingers down so that they meet. We've done this before, but without the strap. And it's for our posture. It's really nice. If your fingertips don't meet, that's okay. If you don't have a strap, you can do this without a strap. And I'll demonstrate that real quickly as you're holding by just taking your right hand, placing it on your left shoulder, reaching around behind you and finding your fingers and trying to grab them. The strap just gives you a little more um, assistance in getting that a little tighter together. So holding this, just another breath. And then we're gonna switch sides. This time I'm gonna demo it without the strap. So just rotating those arms so that the left arm comes to the right shoulder and that right arm tries to find those fingers. If you have the strap, just the same concept. Maybe you inch your fingers up uh, and down to get your fingers to stretch. Holding this, hearing your breath in the back of your throat and releasing that. And we can go ahead and place our strap to this side. We got quite a little bit of use out of it. We're gonna work on our shoulders. We did a little bit of this last week. Um, we tend to, as people, uh, bring our shoulders in and round our backs. We do this when we sit, it just seems to be more comfortable. We sit hunched over our desks and our computers. We even hunch over our uh, cell phone devices. And we don't wanna walk around like that. We want to open up our shoulders and remember our posture because it's so important to our spinal health and our balance in the long term. So we're gonna work on that and do a few little um, stretches for that today. So we're gonna go ahead and sweep our arms up towards the ceiling, bring our palms together, and then just bend the elbows just enough so you're creating somewhat of a diamond effect keeping our head very, very still. Elbows are pointing towards the outside wall. Right elbow to the right wall, left elbow to the left wall. And then from here, with your fingertips pointing towards the ceiling, you're just gonna bring your fingertips to that back wall. Maybe you'll even feel the bottoms of your wrists at the back of your head. And then you'll draw those fingers back up again. And we're gonna try to do eight of these with our breath. So inhale, neutral position above your head. Exhale, arms go back or fingers go back towards the wall. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands back. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands back. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands back. One more. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands back. And then we're gonna clasp our hands together just right where we are and draw them up to the ceiling. So your hands are clasped. And then we're gonna bend our elbows. And this time we're gonna frame our face a little bit. The right elbow is going to frame the top of the head. So it's going to look like this. And we're just gonna do eight of these rotations. So this will count as rotation number one. And I'm going to just count it out while you breathe. And then on your next breath, two. Exhale, three. Inhale, four. Exhale, five. Exhale, six. Exhale, seven. Exhale, eight. Nice work. We have another one to do. So we're gonna take our hands, they're still clasped. Just bring them to the back of your head. Elbows are facing the outside wall, and we're just gonna squeeze our elbows in towards our face, or, it, or right in front of our face. So right now we're exhaling out, squeezing those shoulder blades together, and then take an inhale, reach the elbows together. Exhale out is two, exhale in is three. Exhale out is four, exhale in is five. Exhale out is six, Exhale in is seven. Exhale out is eight. Nice work. Let's take our hands, place them on our waist. We're gonna do a variation of cat-cow. So this time, I know I said it's not good to round our back, but we're gonna actually round our back and then straighten back up again. 
and we'll do eight of these. So we're gonna round our back, feeling our spine curve. Shoulders are up a little bit towards the ears. Elbows are facing towards uh, the corners of that front wall, either corner. And this is your inhale. And then exhale, just sit up nice and tall and draw those elbows back towards the back wall, squeezing the shoulder blades as much as you can. Inhale, number two. Exhale. Inhale, number three. Exhale. Round back, number four. Exhale, back. Inhale, five. Exhale, back. Inhale, six. Exhale, back, almost there. Inhale, seven. Exhale, back. Inhale, eight. Exhale, back. Nice work, very good. Let's take our hands and just put them on our knees and just roll out our shoulders. We've done a lot of work with our shoulders. With our breath and then rotate those shoulders in the opposite direction. Hearing that breath in the back of your throat. Always go back to your breath. Let's go ahead and remove our block. And let's just bring our feet out in front of us so we can take a little forward fold here and maybe a few more little stretches. So let's place our fingertips outside the body. Go ahead and reach them up towards the ceiling. Reach, 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 reach. And then on the exhale, take a little side stretch to the right. Try to keep your hips glued to your mat. Press on up, inhale, come up. Exhale, take a little stretch to the left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, stretch to the right, hips to your mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, to the left. Last one, inhale, reach up. Exhale, take a little stretch to the right. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, little stretch to the left. And then we're gonna come right back to neutral. You still hearing that breath in the back of your throat? Let's take a community breath together just to make sure. Breathing in, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Hearing it right here in the back of your throat. Very nice. Go ahead and bring your fingertips right out to the outside edges of your mat. Inhale, sweep those arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, take a little fold forward. You don't have to touch your toes, but we're warmed up now. So let's draw those toes towards our forehead. Maybe put a little bend into the knee and see if you can't come down a little more. Maybe press your palms into the mat. Take another breath and see if your breath won't send your chest down a little further towards your thighs. Nice work. Great. And then let's go ahead and walk our hands back up. We're going to gracefully swing, bend our knees and swing our legs to the right or left side and come on into a tabletop position. Now, this is where you might want to do a few things. We're going to be here for a little while. So if you have a blanket, this is a great time to use that for your knees, just a little added support and just place it right in the middle of your blanket for your knees. If you don't have a blanket, another option where you really don't need a prop is you just take your mat, double it up, fold it in half, and voila, you have a built-in support system knee pad. I'm gonna go ahead and show you demo with the blanket. So coming on to our tabletop here, We've done this many times if you've been with us before. We've got a few new people, so um, this will be fun to uh, do again if you've been here and fun if you've never done it before. So we're gonna take a look at our fingertips, press our fingertips into the mat. I'm really big on keeping your, your hands active in any kind of a pose where we're table topping it or we're in a downward facing dog because our wrists are very, very delicate and this will protect them, make them stronger. And over time, uh, these poses will become a lot easier. So making sure that you have spider fingers in your fingertips or leaving little indentations into your mat. We're gonna just take a cat cow here. We're gonna breathe in for cow. 
And then we're going to exhale for cat, drawing our chin towards our chest. Breathing in again for cow. Belly button comes towards the mat. And then take a cow, drawing your chin towards your chest. One more. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Nice work. And then coming back to that neutral table on your next breath, you're going to just reach your right hand out in front of you. Thumb faces the ceiling. Reach the left foot back behind you. Toes face the floor. This is balancing. And you can stay right here. If you want a little bit more of a challenge balance, you're just going to bend that knee, reach back behind you with the right hand, grab that foot, find it, and then lift it up and you'll see that you're creating almost a diamond shape. Take your gaze to your mat for balance, and we're gonna hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and then just the palm is gonna come down, foot stays up. The toe is pointed, but we're gonna rotate that toe to, towards the back wall, and we're gonna work on our glutes. We're gonna lift, lift for five, four, Three, two, one, and then we're gonna lower down that knee and make some deep hip circles. Reaching our hips back towards our heels, making some nice uh, circles, creating um, almost a hula hoop style circle. Your spine is very active. Going around about three times. And when you get to the top of your mat on the third time, just reversing those circles in the opposite direction. Taking your time, hearing your breath in the back of your throat. One more time around. And then we're back to neutral to work on the left side. So this time the left hand's gonna come out, thumb faces the ceiling. The right foot's gonna go back. Toe faces the floor. Perfectly fine to stay right here. Hold it for balance. Or if you want a little bit more, just send that uh, left arm back, reach for that right foot, bring it up diamond shape. Gaze at your mat for balance and hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And then go ahead and lower that hand, just the hand, and the foot is going to rotate towards that back wall. And we're going to begin to lift our glutes. Lift, lift, five, four, three, two, one. And then we're going to lower that knee. And let's take a cat cow here. Breathing in for cow. Exhaling for cat, counting it out in your mind. Breathing in for cow, one, two, three, four. Exhaling for cat, one, two, three, four, five. Nice work. And then on your next breath, we're gonna do something a little challenging. It's a nice little stretch. We're gonna do a lizard pose. So looking down at your knees and looking down at your foot, we're gonna work the right side. So just, I'm very visual. I like to actually see what's going to be moving and it's gonna be our right side foot. So on your next breath, you're gonna just lift the right knee maybe guide it forward and then step that right foot right in between your um, hands. And you may have to give it a little help. Let me show you that again. You may have to actually, when it comes up, grab that ankle and just give it a little help to get it there. Taking your time, you may need to come up onto your fingertips if you like. And then um, come off of your blanket or your doubled mat and just Scooch back that left foot a little bit. Taking your right hand, you're gonna press out your right knee so that your foot on the right side just pops over. You can see the bottom of your foot. This is level one and you can stay right here if you like. If you want a little bit more, you can come down onto your elbows. Place your hands onto your mat and just Bring your elbows down, maybe even clasp your hands together. 
if this is too much, back off and just go back to level one. If you still want a little bit more, you can tuck the toes on the left foot and then lift the left knee. And we're gonna stay here taking our gaze to the floor for five, four, three, two, one, and then release all of that. Release that knee. If you're in level three, flatten that foot. If you're in level two, come back up onto the palms, straight arms. And if you're in level one, which we at least are all there, right? We're gonna go ahead and just send that knee back finding that we are back in our tabletop. That was quite a little bit of work and we did it pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and take another cat cow here. Breathing in for cow, exhaling for cat. Breathing in for cow, exhaling for cat. Nice work. And then we're gonna do the other side. So on your next breath, thinking about that left side, taking your time, there's no rush. We're just going to draw very slowly that foot, the top of the foot up towards the mat, and then plant it, maybe take that left foot, give it a little help. We wanna get it right in between our palms. And then once our uh, foot, our left foot is there in between our palms, just take that left hand and bring it right inside that left foot. Notice your hands. Maybe the big, th maybe the, the thumbs actually touch. And then once you're here, you might just come off of your towel or your knee support by just scooting back with the right foot, slowly, 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 not feeling any strain. And then you're just going to peel that right hand, that left hand up off the mat and press that left hand on that left knee pressing just enough that you see the bottom of the left foot just pop open. Level one of lizard. You might just want to stay here and that is perfectly fine. If you want a little bit more, just replace your elbows with where your hands were, clasping your hands together and you're in a level two lizard. If you want a little bit more and don't feel pressured that what you're doing in level one is plenty, uh, but if you do want more, Tuck the toes on the right side, lift up on the right knee. And I'm gonna begin counting here for five, four, three, two, one. And then let's untangle. Let's drop that knee if you're in level three, come up onto your palms if you're in level two. And then just draw that knee back if you were in level one, taking your hand back to your mat and then just bringing that knee back into your neutral table. Let's take a cat-cow here. Breathing in for cow. Exhaling for cat. Breathing in for cow. Exhaling for cat. Let's take one more. Breathing in for cow. Exhaling for cat. We're almost done. We're going to do just a little bit of warrior work while we're in this position. So on your next breath, um, you have a, a choice. You can stay in your tabletop or you can come into a downward facing dog. Um, I'm going to demo it in a down dog uh, just because I think it's an easier way to demo it. But if, but if you want to, we're going to be coming into um, a lunge and so you could just bring it up from a tabletop from here. But I'm going to uh, just tuck my toes, come into a down dog and pedal out my feet. So if you'd like to do it this way, just bend one knee and bring the opposite knee down. Opposite uh, uh, heel down, I meant to say. So you're bending your right knee, bringing down your left heel and then doing the opposite. This stretches out the calf muscles. And then on your next breath, go ahead and raise the right leg, bend that knee, and then just plant that foot right in between your hands and drop that left knee. And we're coming into a lunge. And you're gonna go ahead and raise up for this. You're gonna take your hands and just place them right on your knee. 
And we're gonna just slowly rock forward, just very gently, but so that we feel a little bit of a stretch in the hip connector on the left side. And then we're gonna rock back up. Maybe even rock back enough that our right foot comes up, the toes come up. And then rock forward, leaning, stretching that hip connector, and then rock forward. Let's do one more. Rock forward, stretch on the left side, and then come up to neutral. Nice work. Let's go ahead and sweep our arms up towards the ceiling. Spread your fingers wide. And then exhale, take a little fold. And then just send that right foot all the way back into either your tabletop or if you prefer, tuck the toes and come back into your down dog. And you can pedal out here, hearing your breath. Inhale, exhale. Don't forget to keep your hands active, spider fingers, pressing those fingertips into the mat, so important. And then on your next breath, let's go ahead and raise or draw, if you're in tabletop, that left leg forward. So raising the right leg, bending the knee, drawing it forward and planting, maybe give it a little help, planting that foot in between your palms and then just resting the right knee down, flattening that foot and come on up into your low lunge. Taking your hands, placing them right on the knee and we're gonna do that little flow, that little rocking forward. So we're gonna rock forward, stretching this side, that hip connector on the right side and then coming back up, maybe leaning back just a little bit so that the left toes come up towards the ceiling. Rock forward, stretch, inhale up, toes come up. Rock forward, stretch, inhale, toes come up. And then we come back to our neutral position. Let's sweep our arms up into a mountain, reaching up towards the ceiling. Exhale, take a little fold, press your palms into the mat, slide that foot back into a table or into um, an up dog if you like, or down dog if you like. And if you're in your down dog, let's go ahead and lower our knees so we're all in the same place. We all end up in our tabletop. Let's take another cat cow here. Breathing in for cow. Exhaling for cat, drawing your chin towards your chest. Inhaling for cow. Exhaling for cat. Nice work. On your next breath, we're going to take our right foot and we're gonna reach it back to our mat, straight leg. And then on our next breath, we're gonna take our left foot, reaching it back for the mat. And we are in a plank pose. Now I realize this is a difficult pose. If you wanna drop a knee, feel free, go ahead. If you um, want to challenge yourself and take the plank, you can do that. We're not gonna stay here long, but it's really good for upper body and abdominal strength. So I'm gonna demo the plank. And when we're in the plank, we're on our toes, we're just gonna rock forward so that our Shoulders are right above the wrists, squeeze our elbows in towards our ribs and slowly come down. Maybe your knees come down first, slowly making it down to the mat. And if, um, if your blanket is troublesome to you, you can remove that. I'm just gonna leave mine right where it is, but just know that you can slide that away if you like to. Go ahead and press your right ear into the mat Let's bend our knees and your hands are gonna be right above your shoulders. Kind of relax and kind of reconnect with our breath here. And let's windshield wipe our knees side to side. So bringing your knees towards the right, inhaling, and then bringing your knees towards the left, exhaling. Let me count this out for you. So windshield wipe one, two, three, four, and then come up one, two, three, four, five to the right, to the left. Inhale to the right, one, two, three, four. 
Exhale to the left, one, two, three, four, five. Nice work. And then coming up just to a neutral position here, we're gonna lower our feet down and we're gonna take a locust pose. Locust is just lifting everything off the mat, including your hands and only your belly button will be pulling into the mat. So let's go ahead and try to do this. Inhale, take a breath in, lift everything up off the mat, reaching, reaching, reaching those back feet for five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and lower everything down to the mat. Press your left ear into the mat and take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Nice work. And then let's go ahead and bend those knees again and swish them side by side. You can rotate the toes to the back wall if you like. So inhale to the right. Exhale to the left. Inhale to the right, exhale to the left. One more. Inhale to the right, exhale to the left. And then bringing your feet uh, or your knees just neutral, staying right here. Knees are still bent, toes are still facing towards the back wall. Go ahead and take your right hand and try to find your right ankle. And if you find that, just grab hold of it. And then take your left hand and reach back and try to find your left ankle. Take your time and, and you know, don't get frustrated if you only find one ankle. This is not an easy pose. And you can stay right here. If you wanna stay right here, you can actually try to pull your heels towards your hips. Or if you want a little bit more, you can take a floor bow. It's a little more difficult, a little more stretch in the low back. For floor bow, we're just gonna lift everything up off the mat, lifting the soles of our feet towards the ceiling, lifting our chest up off the mat. So your choice, stay right here or lift up everything off the mat, straightening the arms and holding it for five, four, three, two, one, and release wherever you are. Go ahead and let go of your ankles. Bring your um, fingertips and your palms right above your chest. Press your right ear into the mat and take a deep breath in. Deep exhale out. Breath travels up the spine. And breath travels down the spine. Nice work. And then think about where your hands are. They're right above your shoulders. So we're just going to replace our hands with our elbows. We're just gonna reach our elbow on the right side, right where that hand was, and then slide that elbow on the left side, right where that hand was. And voila, we are in a Sphinx pose. And we're just gonna hold this. And um, this is a difficult pose, even though it seems easy for people to stay still in. So if you want to squeeze your buttocks, squeeze your legs, and then slowly let go, sometimes that takes the strain off the low back. And then squeeze the buttocks, squeeze the back of the legs, and then gently let go. It might feel better to do that. And then on your next breath, think about where your elbows are. We're gonna replace our elbows this time with our hands. So we're just gonna slide the hand right where that elbow was on the right side and slide the hand where it was on the left side and press ourselves right back into a tabletop. And from here, we're gonna do just a quick hero's pose. So we're gonna tuck our toes and sit right back onto our hips and take a look at your toes. Maybe the little baby toe isn't squished all the way underneath. So you can adjust that with your fingers. And we're gonna take this time to rotate our um, wrists. So just rotate the wrists. Sitting on your feet, this is for plantar fasciitis. If you ever have any lumps or bumps on the bottoms of your feet, 
this is the golden ticket to relieve that or maybe even prevent that. It's really, really good for the bottoms of your feet. Great if you wear high heel shoes. Holding this for another breath. And then releasing this because it can be uncomfortable. It's bringing your hands out to starfish and just pressing them down into your mat. Let's go ahead and flatten the feet and paddle the feet out just to let go of any kind of discomfort you might have been holding on to during that hero's pose. And then we're going to sit back on our heels and I'm going to go ahead and face you as we do this. Sitting back on our heels isn't too uncomfortable so we're going to just sit back here and maybe hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and then just come onto your hips. The feet come to the left side and we're gonna swing the legs around, ending up in an easy pose. Now, if you want to sit on a block, we're gonna do a little neck stretch. If you want to sit on the block to add some length, you can do that, you don't have to. But anytime you can use your blocks, it's kind of fun to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and demo that, place a block right under my seat. Allowing for a little bit of relief in length since we did some warrior series that were um, emphasizing stretching that part of our hips. So sitting up with that nice tall spine, once again, imagining that little string just holding you up from the ceiling. Let's take care of our necks today and go ahead and raise our right hand. Reach it all the way across till we find our left ear and then draw that right ear towards our right shoulder. Close your eyes if you like, it's so relaxing. Breath travels up the spine. Breath travels down the spine. Inhale, exhale, and then release your hand and take that same hand and place it on the back of your skull. And you're just gonna draw your nose towards your right armpit. Maybe keep the eyes open and see that side of the floor on the right side of your mat. Maybe even take it a little further for a deeper stretch in your spine. Hearing your ujjayi breath in the back of your throat. Holding this. And then release that nice work. Before we do the other side, let's take our hands and just place them on our knees and just swing the neck to the right. Swing it to the left, swing it to the right, swing it to the left, and then come back to neutral. We hold and store so much tension in the back of our necks and the upper parts of our shoulders and back. And we want to let all of that tension and stress go. So this is a good um, procedure for that. Let's go ahead and raise the left hand. Reach it all the way across the head till we find the right ear and then draw that left ear towards the left shoulder. Close your eyes if you like. Fully relaxing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Take a breath in. Exhale out. And then release that. Take that same hand, put it right at the back of your skull. Draw your nose right to the left armpit. Maybe try to see that floor or carpet right outside the left side of your mat. Holding this. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale and release. Let's one more time, reach our shoulders up towards our ears, roll them back open, squeeze those shoulder blades together, holding this, nice work. And then let's come off of our mat and we're gonna make our way onto our backs, ending up pretty much the way we started. So let's do this in a very graceful way. Let's, let's first bring our feet into a butterfly pose, sitting up nice and tall, holding this for a breath, and then releasing our ankles. Let's go ahead and just draw our knees together, and then just very gracefully pull your feet onto your mat, 
and you can come on to your elbows if you like to get down to your mat or you can actually come down very slowly working your abdominal cavities it, it cavity it's up to you and then slowly make your way all the way down to your mat let's go ahead and keep our knees bent maybe even scooch them up just a little bit higher pressing our low back into the mat our sacrum lumbar area and then knock your knees together and we're going to heel toe our feet all the way to they're at the very edge of your mat or maybe they're even off your mat don't want any pain it should feel really nice and just take a deep breath in exhale out fogging up that mirror hearing that ujjayi breath in the back of your throat let's take another one just like it inhale surprised one two three four exhale fog up that mirror one two three four five great and then go ahead and heel toe your feet in towards each other let's go ahead and grab our knees here Draw them in towards your chest and take a little gentle rock side to side. Maybe even make some little circles into your mat. Pressing that low back, sacrum, lumbar area that's so tender into the mat. Make sure you reverse your circles if you're making circles. And then on your next breath, let's go ahead and come into a happy baby. Just drawing your feet up grabbing either your big toe and your second toe or option to grab the outside edges of your feet if your toes are a little sensitive and make some little gentle rock side to side if you like you can even straighten one leg bend the other and then reverse that just depending on what your body needs the most there's no right or wrong way let's stay for another breath here And then on your next breath, go ahead and bring your legs into a waterfall position. Straight legs, draw your toes towards your forehead. You're going to feel a nice stretch right there, just drawing your toes as much as you can towards your forehead. You feel that up and down the back of your legs. That's your sciatica nerve. Really, really healthy, really nice for your legs and your nerves. And you can just place your hands right by your side here. And let's point our toes towards the ceiling and then feel the difference. Draw those toes towards your forehead. Feel that? Feels really, really nice. Let's turn this into a reverse pigeon. So we're going to bend the left knee. You might need to look up for just a second and make sure that that left ankle goes right above the right knee. Taking your hands just draw them right through. You have a little triangle on your left side that you made because you've made an upside down number four. And then clasp your hands together and just pull that right leg towards you. Maybe you stay still here. Maybe you make some little gentle rock side to side, depending on how you're feeling. Remembering that yoga is a journey and every day is different with the way our muscles and our joints might feel. And that's okay. Remembering that staying hydrated is so important with yoga. And some days we might be more hydrated than other days. And on your next breath, let's go ahead and switch sides. Just creating that number four on the left side, sending those hands through and drawing that foot on the left side towards you. Remember those toes. You're going to get a deeper stretch if you draw those toes towards your forehead. And always you have the option to press away the opposite bent leg with your elbow. And I'll say something else too. If, if this is not comfortable for you, there are different variations. You can always bend the outside leg. And you still get a nice stretch. Just a different variation of reverse pigeon. This is such a good pose for constipation, digestion, anything to do with um, your stomach and your uh, digestive intestinal uh, organs. Really nice. And let's go ahead and release this. 
And let's just turn this into a, um, a, a, a butterfly pose, Supdabata Konasana. Sorry, guys, Supdabata Konasana. Just pressing your feet in towards each other and then lowering them down to the mat, drawing your hands out to your side with your palms facing the ceiling. We're going to go right into Shavasana here. So go ahead and bring your feet wide outside your mat. Close your eyes, relax through the crown of the head. If your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth, just let it drop right into the lower palate. If your teeth have been clenched, which probably they have been, anytime we exercise, we clench our teeth and we don't even know it. Just move your jawbone side to side and melt from your shoulders all the way to your toes, just melt right into your mat. And let's just stay here for a few breaths. Count your breath. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Just enjoying your breath. Relaxing, melting. Not thinking about anything but what you're doing for yourself right now. Staying and relaxing, closing your eyes. Feeling your chest rise and feeling your chest fall. One more breath here. And then on your next breath, slowly begin to awaken your body. Just wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Maybe rotate your wrists, rotate your ankles. And then slide your feet back onto your mat. Feel the sensation of the mat between your feet, the bottoms of your feet. And just begin to windshield wipe your knees side to side. Maybe the hips move along with this nice movement. Inhaling, exhaling, so relaxing. We did a lot of work today. Uh, it was a very gentle practice, emphasizing relaxation, emphasizing some stretching. We didn't do some of the things that we always do, but I think variety is a nice way to practice yoga and to change things up from time to time. So on your next breath, when your knees fall to the right side, go ahead and roll your whole body over towards the right side. Make that little pillow for your head. Keep your eyes closed if you like. Take a deep breath in, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. One more breath, deep inhale from the belly, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Nice. And then very gently, Press your left hand into the floor or the mat, and then press your right hand into your mat, making your way back up into that comfortable seated position. We'll go ahead and skip the block because we won't be here for very long. But go ahead and press your sit bones firmly into the mat, placing your hands maybe just right outside your body, uh, fingertips, TPing your fingers, so fingertips right into the mat. Sitting up with that tall spine, head and the crown of the head is lifted towards the ceiling. Let's inhale our arms up towards the ceiling. Reach, 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 reach. And then press the palms together. Exhale, down to heart center. Let's take care of our wrists one more time for all that computer work and cell phone work we all do. Dial those fingertips down towards the floor. Look at your veins. Pinkies are facing towards your body. And the next breath, rotate those fingertips right back up. 
Let's separate our hands and take one more forward fold, pressing your palms into the floor, pressing your chest towards the floor or your mat, low back stretch. Should feel really nice. And then press yourself right back up again. Hands go to your knees or to your heart center. Let's go ahead one more time and lift the shoulders up towards our ears, roll them back open. And this is the close of our practice today. Thank you so much. It was an honor to guide you today. I hope you feel really good right now and you have a great rest of your day. Namaste.